In this video, I'm going to critique all my Golden Demon winning miniatures, and we're going to see how they hold up after all these years. And she's going to help me with it. Nope, actually, she just left. Bye. Sponsored by Surfshark. Now, I was a bit nervous to make this video because all of these entries are older than 10 years and even the ones that won two silver demons in 2018 have been done 10 years ago. Some of the older ones, they really did not hold up really well looking at them in the current year. So to me, this feels a bit like pulling my pants down in a public space. But I think it's a good thing to show you these miniatures and to talk about how painting changes over the years. And I hope this video can contribute to the awareness that all of us started out worse than we are today. And some of us just have a bit of a head start of a couple of years or decades. So let's look at the first one, which is a Nurgle Marine from the year 2005. So during these days I was really focused on trying to get gradient smooth. You can see it here that the main focus really is on, on trying to create some smooth blendings, even though I was not particularly good at it back then. But uh, there was a few techniques like glazing over brown over <laughs> everything. Like you can see it on the banner, there is brown glazes over everything and also on the gray, obviously, for the shadows. I just kind of liked my Vallejo smoke, I think. A lot of these earlier paint jobs have this rather dirty feeling and while it kind of fits on Nurgle, I feel like I overdid that a lot. But you can clearly see a uh, senator highlight source. Another thing that I would like to work on is maybe add another intensity to the greens. Even though the armor should read as gray, I would try to work in more of these color transitions and definitely use another shadow color than just the brown. The freehand on the banner is really just super naive. It's <laughs> just painted in black and I added uh, a red highlight which was a complementary color to green so it was good, right? But it just does not work at all. And obviously the banner is just a really thick sheet of green stuff which is also really not super refined. One general theme that I can see with my miniatures that won over the years, especially back then, they had these ideas of that they really would like to reward creativity and any conversion really was en encouraged and, and appreciated back then and that are a recurring theme in all of my entries. To finish this up, I think the overall theme of a gray base color for Nurgle and the green trims and just minor saturated highlights can actually work today too. And I don't think I would do anything different these days. Obviously the sculpts of Nurgle today are a bit more mumbo jumbo, um, tentacles and spilled guts and all of that. But I like the simplicity of, you know, getting rid of all detail, just having the surfaces to highlight. So I think these aspects are really okay. I did a relatively smooth blending uh, on this and I think that's why they gave this one a silver demon back then. And it's really fun to look at some of these because there's a lot of backstories attached to them. During those days I did not have a lot of experience. There was not an easy way to grow as a painter and to get better. If you look at the scene today, there's so many YouTube videos and patrons and all of that out there and it's really easy to get really good really fast. And even though I was teaching some of the more basic things back then already, I was not super confident in my own color schemes and I was really not confident at all to come up with my own projects. So back then what I did was I took the paint shops of people that I really enjoyed looking at and I just tried to copy them which I think is a valid strategy if you want to get better to see how much you can copy the things that really good painters do to have a bit of a checkpoint to see where you're at with your technique and then you can add your own creativity to it eventually and I think I got this idea from Jakob Rune Nielsen who I was on the Warhammer community page a while ago with the Shard of the Void Dragon. And I wanted to just copy it and see how well my skills would hold up against it. And when it was done, 
Some people said, well, why don't you go to a golden demon with this? And back then I had no idea what a golden demon is, so I said, sure, why not? And weirdly enough, it went to silver trophy. And what followed was a bit of a shitstorm that was spearheaded by some of the French painters that were really active in the community and they were considered the best and they also felt responsible for this baby that existed that was creativity in miniature painting. In hindsight it's totally valid criticism because I copied someone else's work and I won an award with it even though I did not expect to just go to my first golden demon and win anything. I also did not paint everything there's a little detail on its back that is unpainted, so that added some additional drama to the story. But yeah, I got a lot of hate mail and it's kind of interesting that there can be so much drama about plastic soldiers. But again, I feel like it's a valid criticism, even though I did not plan this at all, I just tried to push myself. Do you have a minute to talk about this video's sponsor Surfshark? We'll be kidding, you're watching a 50 minute video, of course you do. I use Surfshark for multiple reasons. First of all, it's a great security tool for any device that is connected to the internet. You can surf the web without being troubled by ads. That's funny because this is an ad. Phishing attempts, trackers or malware, especially if you do so through a public access point. Don't want anyone to learn about your secret miniature buying addiction? Easy, just mask your internet address by activating Surfshark's VPN function and you can shop all you want without China knowing because you care about that. No, seriously. Another thing that annoys me, especially living in Austria, no, not the basements, leave the basements alone, is that I have such a limited number of shows and movies available through the internet streaming platforms that I pay for. Using Surfshark, you can unlock the 15 largest Netflix country libraries, including the US and Japan for all you weeps out there. And I can finally watch The Office all day while editing. So if you want to be safe in public Wi-Fi, overcome location-based discrimination, Reach your favorite sites even when in countries that ban them and secure your data professionally on an unlimited number of devices. Get Surfshark today. Use the address surfshark.deals slash Trevarian. That is also going to be in the description of this video. And enter the promo code Trevarian for 83% off and three extra months for free. The next event I went to was an Italian Golden Demon and Surprise, I did something with Nurgle again. So what I tried to do here is to up my game with free hands and <laughs> they are relatively simple. It's just checker patterns, but even just doing checker patterns back then and doing them relatively smooth and nicely was a step up. But I also tried to do the Nurgle star on the back. So gold, uh, non-metallic metal. And overall, I just tried to capture Nurgle in its essence and like I said before here again we can see the focus on conversions because I converted the whole body of the horse all of the legs are repositioned almost everything of the rider is re-sculpted and I sculpted something like a gladiator helmet with a plume you can also see that I shaded everything with this brown it was really a signature move for every color you can see the red is shaded that way the greens even the the bandages and also the skull i really don't know what i was thinking back then so the things i still like here is the skull part where the flesh just fell off and how the bright skull contrasts against the rotten flesh i also like the intensity of the faces and how the blood interacts and I like how it contrasts against the rest of the miniature. And I also like the small Nurgle symbol as a free end. I was really paying attention to how the blood patterns would develop on the skite. I really like to be really meticulous with my research and I was researching patterns and all of that and how they would interact with different surfaces. So what would I change? Obviously the whole thing has a distinct style where it's rather muted colors. And I think back then it was really fitting for Nurgle and it was a really distinct style of mine. And I don't know if I should change that at all. And I don't know, I think the metallics look good. The wood looks okay. It looks like it's really old wood that has been touched a lot. There is some texture on the clothing. I really like the color variety that I tried to put in. 
even in the armor this time, so it's not just reds, there is also a lot of greens. The metallics are relatively smooth, you have the, the really dark areas transitioning really nicely into the more shiny areas. I don't think I would change that much on this one, honestly. At least as far as the paint job goes. But now let's just talk about the base quickly. So again, I think for the time it was okay. I was using a lot of natural stone back then. And I just dry brushed it and washed it. And I think the stones look relatively okay. But uh, <laughs> the skull obviously is hovering there. It's not really integrated with the base. The snow is just really doesn't look all that natural. To me it just doesn't feel like snow. And then of course I had these standard plants that everyone else put on their bases. And also the water effects are not really that good. I think it's just one layer of water effects. Another piece that I took with me back then was this Celeborn. And I have to say these old white metal Lord of the Rings miniatures, they are really awesome. They were sculpted with a lot of attention to detail. They have nice volumes, they were just paintable and I won a lot of Golden Demons with Lord of the Rings miniatures because I think they really suited my style, creating smooth transitions and while they're not perfect, especially on the hair, I feel like I have some weak points here and also the skin even though it fits, it's not that intriguing, it has some weak points where uh, it doesn't look really defined. Nowadays with the knowledge that I have of how faces work, I would probably try to add a bit more variety. However, these things were really tiny and I don't know if it makes that much sense to go for all of this variety in there because the surfaces are just so small and trying to push all of the colors that should be in a face in there, I don't think if that is a good idea on these small Lord of the Ring miniatures. But I really like the highlights on the shirt and since back then if you were able to paint relatively smooth, that was a really good thing for Golden Demons. Even though the contrast is not really high on this one, I think it was really accurately painted. And I also really like how the light behaves on the back of his hands and how they kind of look out uh, from under the clothing. And I think this was yeah, a really solid piece for back then. I did not expect to win anything with this, but I just think it hit a nerve. Again, we have the problem of all the natural stuff on the base. So one thing I'm not fond of is that I used a relatively similar base for every single one of my entries back then. I have just a natural stone on top of modeling sand and these natural vegetation parts added and the, the very sloppy water effects. And I don't really don't like the plant in the back. Uh, it feels a bit forced and unnatural but I just wanted another detail back there to counterbalance the composition and looking at it now I don't think it's that bad maybe I should revisit some of these more natural materials for bases in 2006 I had three winning entries and one of them was Velacore that placed third in the monster category and again we have a piece that is heavily converted. I think they also like the free hands, but going into the critique right now, I think the free hands just look like a wallpaper. They're not integrated with the paint job at all. They're just me trying to show off that I can freehand skulls on a flat surface. And the background of these skulls obviously is just one color. I tried to do some highlighting towards where the wings attached. Uh, I have a transition to the red uh, skin color there, but the rest just kind of is boring. I should have probably done something with that. I did not do a really good job with the volumetric highlighting. I just kind of placed a highlight on the shoulder and then a highlight in the middle of the biceps. It's a more traditional highlighting. I have not heard of volumetric highlighting back then and I don't think it clicked until probably like eight years later that um, we have to define these shapes a bit more natural. Again, I think they rewarded the heavy conversion there. I sculpted most of the body myself. Uh, I only took like parts of the arms, probably just the hands and I re-sculpted everything else and obviously the face uh, I kept. And obviously you can see I have the classic stone um, with modeling sand base and the natural material which I think 
altogether it doesn't look bad uh, it's a really simple base I don't think I would change anything in retrospect it just bothers me that I use the same base for almost every entry for almost every miniature that I painted back then on the bright side I think the metallics are really good it contrasts the shininess versus the more dull rusted areas and again we have a lot of shading with washes you can see that I just I did it really neatly and I put a lot of work in but there's a lot of shades with washes with very thin layers of washes and that was my thing back then I just tried to build gradients with really thin layers of washes and really thin layers of highlights and all of this took ages uh, the transitions on the lettery parts of the wings but back then I was known as someone who can paint relatively smooth transitions and that was my yeah, selling point in the community, I think. Even though today I don't value this at all. And there are so many more ways to create interesting gradients without having to, to paint uh, 100 thin layers. Another thing that I really like to do is these sheets of paper where the name of the entry is written on the front of the plinth. I should probably do that more often these days, uh, simply because it's really unique and, and it adds a bit of three-dimensionality to the plinth. You can do a lot with the texture on uh, this paper. Okay, this entry won gold, but as you can see, it's a chaplain and of course it should be black. There was a different focus in these competitions they really try to reward creativity so the things i like about this is again the conversion even though his right arm is probably a bit too long but i sculpted every single finger on this piece and i just noticed that some of his fingers are missing he had a snap right off i think it fell over that just happens when you have miniatures for 10 or more years I basically sculpted a Primaris Marine with the straighter legs and the more natural proportions. I should probably put him next to a Primaris Marine and see how it looks. And I also like how I sculpted all of these scrolls. And also I like what I did with the banner. I just filed off all the detail so that I could put on a freehand. And then I put all of these scrolls on top and they flow really nicely. But I like the metallics, they're shaded nicely. But again, you can see that they are <laughs> weathered a lot uh, my standard approach of using the browns in the recesses even on the blue and again the chipping looks a bit better but it's still this unrefined thing of uh, i'll just put a big scratch here and a big flake comes off here no real focus on the edges and all of that on some of the metallics i feel like i could have worked out the shine a bit more everything gets dialed down a bit too much you would probably get away with this in larger scales but on these smaller scales you need a few more edge highlights the blues i actually like um i think they could be improved a tiny bit with you know secondary lights and all of that but back then that was not on the radar at all. You just kind of highlighted the shapes and you just try to highlight those more or less correctly. I almost feel like I had a bit more of an idea about what is volumetric highlighting. I also kind of like the freehand. Obviously, I had to move everything a bit down because I didn't want it to clash with the folds uh, in the upper third. I kind of like the non-metallic metal ultramarine symbol the tyranid head on the base has the classic tyranid scheme painted on i think apart from the criticism of this being the wrong armor color and all of the elements being relatively naive i think this is not a bad paint job i like how i did the whole variation in the face i just noticed that i also re-sculpted some parts of the face but there is a lot of detail in here i did a lot of sculpting they honored that for sure there's a freehand on here uh, all of the elements are rather dynamic it's a dramatic pose i think that's what worked back then one year later in 07 i entered this into the competition and we'll start with the really bad parts obviously the base it's really just dry brushed parts of plaster. I like the elements that are in there with the pillar and the barrel and how the vegetation just grows out of that. So these elements are nice. They are just really not executed all that well. For the barrel, I could have made another pass and maybe used a hairspray technique or something like that to add a bit more color so that it's not just a rusted piece of metal. 
the slabs of plaster definitely would have benefited from a lot more color variation and not just being a gray dry brush and maybe a wash of brown. They look really boring and I could have done something with that. Another thing I don't really like and that I always struggled with was red. Uh, so the red armor I don't really like. And you can see, same approach, using the base color, adding one highlight, which resulted in something that looked really smooth. And then applying washes of brown was what I was doing for a lot of these colors. Especially looking at the shoulder guard, I think it worked. Uh, it has some really nice color tones to it and color transitions, but it's just the same old, same old. And obviously it's a lot of flat surfaces that don't have a lot of variety in there. I think I was just able to get away with this relatively simple method of blending and uh, having the appearance, or actually it's not an appearance because it looks really smooth even in these pictures. I think that was just something I could do and impress people with for a long time. Nowadays, of course, I would try to paint a lot more reflections in there. As the arms rays progressed and as smooth transitions alone were not enough, you would have to do these secondary reflections and reflection patterns and just show that you can paint more than a transition or a relatively large area. Another thing, even though I think it kind of fits, is the brass or it probably should be gold since it's corn. A lot of this is just base color wash and I don't even think I added a single highlight on these I just tried to leave some parts untouched by the wash that would end up being brighter things that I do like is the whole imperial guard I think the highlights uh, work nicely I think the color combinations look nicely I had these color transitions from brown to green the helmet this time I feel like it fits really nicely and I also paid a lot of attention to the chips and having a distinguishing line between the metals and the base color. There is this black uh, distinguishing line that took a lot of time to paint and a lot of meticulous effort to do. And of course, I really like the face of the corn dude. I actually tried to enter a whole squad of these, but then I ran out of time and I just had this one painted. And now that I think of it, I painted up that Imperial Guardsman in one night before the gold demon and I did the base I think in two hours before the competition and I just slapped it all together and all of a sudden I had a dual entry and that's the story behind this one. During that time I feel like a lot of my efforts were trying to maximize the time investment versus the outcome and in some instances it just worked. I took a helmet and just sculpted on that demon face and I think that came out really good and really detailed. I remember this Bretonian being in the run for gold. However, I didn't give it a shield and they told me afterwards if it had a shield with a fitting freehand on it, it would have won gold. Like this, it just won, just won silver in 2007. And again, we follow the theme of me heavily converting my golden demon entries. And I think this was one thing that burned me out a lot. These entries were always a lot of work invested before you even got to the painting. And here I think I sculpted the whole rider. There's maybe the tiniest elements of some pre-existing armor, but everything, the position, the armor pieces, the chain mail, the clothing on top of the armor. And I even did the Pegasus wings. I made the horse blankets longer. Uh, there is a lot of added folds and I also added some clothing to the reins and <laughs> the goal here was clearly to do a million freehands and to impress the judges with that had I only added the shield. What could have been better with this entry apart from shield? The freehands look somewhat naive. They are um, rather basic. Um, I was just getting into trying to paint really tiny pictures with acrylics probably have tried to stylize the lines a bit more instead of trying to paint them photorealistic. The blue is a lot of yeah empty space. Maybe it fits because uh, the rest of it is rather detailed and I think I took a real life example and I just tried to copy that so it probably made sense. Obviously again I had the really minor transitions so really minor highlights not a lot of contrast but the question is, should you add a lot more contrast in a context like this? 
so now looking at all of these pictures i don't think there is that much to criticize a lot of it makes sense in the context of what were you trying to do back then and obviously you try to do everything really smooth and as smoothly as possible so i think a lot of these entries won because they hit the nerve with games workshop i often say my current style is really not compatible but i think back then i hit exactly what they were looking for so you can see that here what i did was obviously a non-metallic metal was pretty much the new kid on the block i even had a chat with one of the german judges back then when they said if they're painting non-metallic metal i don't even understand that so it has to be good so in that vein when we look at this miniature even though it uses the rather basic techniques again if you look at the red uh, what i did was just highlighting it a bit and then washing it down with black so it creates these smooth transitions and they're good enough you can see that everything is a bit shiny because it's the same wash approach that i use for all of my reds i definitely like the base and how it's composed i like the natural vegetation just shooting off with these sprouts um, coming out from behind and and him just standing in the middle of this uh, slightly elevated i think the base really complements the pose itself and it's a rather simple approach to non-metallic gold but it's really effective in its placement of just having really bright areas next to really dark areas and the small highlight part here in the middle and then the rest being neatly executed with the transitions of also the steel armor downwards and then with the darker parts and just the the edge highlights up here it, it all works really well uh, both from placement of highlights and also color choice and for the blade itself the yeah change of having two gradients on one side and just one gradient on the other side it creates a really realistic pattern and i think that made a lot of impressions back in 2007. now what would i change i think i have a hint of a color variation in that blade where it goes from white over a bit of a brown uh, on the one side and the other side is more monochromatic there's a, a hint of blue in there but it's black to white with that hint of blue i would probably try to add a bit more color variation there nowadays as far as the face goes it's again a really simple approach it only has a shade color a mid-tone and a highlight color i don't think i used any additional colors in there but again we're talking about lord of the rings miniatures which are super super tiny and i think this was a very effective way to have smoothness in there and not uh, overdo any of the other effects there was no need to put in a lot of variation it just really fits the character because he was that yeah more pale king that was inside a lot with these cobwebs covering everything and stuff like that and now he's out in the sun and trying to battle it out and i also think the hair is done well enough Hair always depends on how the sculpt is worked out and how much space you have on the strains of hairs to work with. Here there's not that much volume to work with. There was these um, rather thin lines that ran across or that defined the flow of the hair and I just highlighted these um, more globally and then just one or two strains as it curves in different ways. I think that works. The letter parts are rather simple they just blend in with the rest. It should not take a um, major role in the composition. There's really not that much I would, would change nowadays, except maybe for adding a bit more of color variation in the sword. Okay, now we're talking about one of my favorite entries ever, uh, which was in a category that does not exist anymore, which was large scale. And they made this category for inquisitor sized figures but what people did and what i also did was we just entered completely self-sculpted figures into this category and it was just you know our way of okay we are creative we want to do our own things we want to create stuff around the warhammer background and this was our chance to shine what i tried to do was i tried to sculpt my 
favorite Sororita artwork and it was I don't remember one of my one of the earliest sculpts that I did maybe the third or something like that and it shows especially in the face she has this really thick nose and also her forehead is a bit compressed so all of that hair just sits really pushed down and, and she has this long jawline and, and mouth box and it just looks really off from a few angles and the backpack got really large in the end but I think you could argue for it being um, a power source that needed to have a certain size and and the sororitas just not having the superhuman size of space marines. I don't really like most of the parts uh, simply because they are highlighted really subtle. Of course it's a larger scale so you could argue that that is okay but a lot of the leather, for example, looks really basic. The reds, while I did not use my typical base color wash approach, look a bit flat. The freehands don't really come out. I should have probably defined those a bit more. The metallics are okay. They don't really have a lot of depth. Also, um, the skin tones are a bit flat. Um, this is a larger scale. Definitely could have done something with the face where I cared more about the zones of the face. And obviously the hair is rather flat too. The scribbling on the scrolls is really rough and looks really unrealistic. I think after that I took a lot more time <laughs> to invest into scrolls and it has been a bit of a pet peeve of mine whenever these um, scrolls and purity seals just had writing that looked like you put them on with a sharpie. I really like the knee iconography of the sororitas. I like how that turned out. Also the pose in general, I really really like how the scalp turned out. The paint job of the armor is relatively flat. I have just some highlights on the bracers and the highlights on the scalps on knees, they look okay. The rest is highlighted rather conservatively. So I just wanted to have the sculpt do most of the work because it's a larger scale, it would catch a lot more. I should have probably worked a bit more on these reflection patterns. But again, that was like 13 years ago. I did not know that much about secondary highlights. In general, it's just really flat. It's that precise thing that a lot of starting painters have where they are too conservative with the highlights and they don't overdo the highlights and the contrast. And it just looks like a plastic figure that's standing there and not really like figure that is alive. So I think it lacks a bit of that. And to continue that, uh, the background is just slabs of carved uh, plaster again. And it's a f really flat wall, so I could have done a lot more with that. My idea back then was I want a relatively neutral background where the figure just stands out. Nowadays, I would probably still work in a bit more detail. Another thing that is rather basic is the chipping and especially the Imperial Eagle on top of the layer that would show if you had some chipping. The way that the paint is applied on top of a judge just doesn't work. Then I took a long long break because the Sororita won a third place in 2008 and I had three other entries that did not place at all and during that year I had a bit of an epiphany where I think I was just chasing award after award and I was just trying to win golden demons but my painting started to change away slightly from what Games Workshop was looking for back then and especially in 2008 I think I went a bit too overboard with the creativity and with the more sketching approaches so I took a break from golden demons and only in 2013 I took 11 entries for 11 categories and one of them was this entry and I just made a party of five beastmen that were using weapons and shields that they looted and I really took my okay smoothness over everything approach to the next level with these and I just tried to smooth the hell out of the skin tones and it took me hundreds of hours to finish and then in the end they lost to Ben Comet who was priding himself back then that he painted his winning entry in a day with loaded brush and stuff like that. But they took a bronze demon and they're still some of my favorite paint jobs because they tell a story and they are just so typical for my painting back then with the smoothness and a lot of the re-sculpting. 
and a lot of just painted iconography. I really liked to do that back then. Just subtle freehands and really neatly executed freehands. That was what I really liked back then. I mean, obviously today I would highlight some of these uh, muscles a bit differently, but they are all under a global light. And, and in general, I think the skin tones are okay. They have good variation, so they're not all the same. That was what I was trying to do. I just wanted a slight variation on every one of these, but they still have this pastel color tone to them. All of them have that, so they really fit together as a group. One thing I'm not super happy about is they have this pastel desaturated skin colors and the horns are just black and gray and, and, and white. I think I could have both made those a bit more smooth and also added more variety to them. So maybe just a tiny bit of brown here and there. But that is about the only criticism honestly that I have for these. I like how the shields turned out, how the weathering and the chipping turned out. I added a couple of different techniques with some smudging on the blue and, and white shield for example. And I like the color composition and honestly I even like the really simple bases. They let the figures stand there without drawing attention. I don't know, what do you think? What are they missing? Are they missing anything? I think they're relatively okay for back then and also I thought I could win gold with them but they didn't. But that's another story. I'm not doing that good of a job as my own worst critic but critiquing is not about making things up for the sake of critiquing. So this duel took silver 2 in 2013. And I'm a bit torn because there's some really good aspects in there, but there's also some really bad aspects. I completely sculpted the assassin on top and it was really nice to see that even though I added a official Games Workshop figure as the second participant, that you can still do something that is completely scratch built as the second opponent. It's highlighted a bit too boring I want to say, but then again it's an assassin and it should not draw a lot of attention and I like how the non-metallic gradients turn out and how it's a bit of a highlight next to the rather muted colors of her body. I really like the pose and how it integrates with the scene just jumping down from the watchtower. Another thing that I like about this is the whole scratch build the clock tower and the clock and I also like how the, the salt technique and that blue element turned out. And in general, I also like how the non-metallic parts on the Rubik Marine, which shouldn't he be dust, shouldn't he not have a face? I don't know. It's a bit of a theme of me doing things that are not fluff conforming and winning golden demons with it. But I like the color composition. The non-metallic gold is rather simple but effective since I thought of these as being super polished and not having a lot of dirt on them. And the armor is always kind of staying clean. The blue and yellow contrast was nice. And I also like the concept of the banner, even though it's maybe missing some something above the pole, uh, a symbol or something like that. But the, the eye looked nice. Looking at it now, it's probably a really simple design, but it was effective. The armor, if you look at the right arm, just has this subtle highlight running across the whole length. So I tried to just focus on a single highlight, put that really meticulously and draw attention through that. Nowadays, again, I would add bounce lights and, and try to work out these parts a bit more and Add a bit more shadow too, so a lot more contrast to draw the eye. I think the gold has some nice contrast in some parts, especially on the shoulder guard. But the rest of the armor is subtle. But I keep repeating myself, this was the style that was looked for in Golden Demons back then. And I kind of adapted to it. For the weapon, the non-metallic effects are nicely placed. I like the placement. Uh, they're really subtle, but that's also a big problem. I feel like it's too boring. So I could have added a bit of color variation there, maybe add a bit of purple, um, not just use this dark blue, blue gray, and then just highlight it with white. I'm just trying to find some interesting color there. But overall, I think the marine is nicely composed, uh, even with the purple that it has on the loincloth part. It's 
really neatly painted especially with details like the eye on the belt buckle the skin tone itself is maybe a bit too boring a bit too simple but again uh, back then before going overboard with a lot of additional color shades having just a really simple gradient but making that one smooth was the way to go so what i really don't like i feel like i messed up the fluff so obviously rubik marines they're just dust inside their armor and he should not have a face. And another big thing is how the stones and nice scratch built all of that except for the, the window frames. I like these big blocks of maybe a cathedral or something like that in the 41st millennium. But the way I painted it is really boring. It's just gray and just the scratches highlighted. It's just a really, really boring effect. And overall, this was a really fun project. And again, I think I went a bit overboard with the details and the whole... <laughs> before getting to a painting just building a whole scenery is just crazy and and takes so much time but i think this investment really paid off during these times the next one was really fun to do as well it's what i call the crude collector and it was a really unique project because i had an idea of you know the crude stealing jeans why wouldn't they uh, steal items and armor plates and weapons and all of that from the prey that they kill. So here I have a crude rider that just plastered his riding animal with armor parts. You can see that there is a lot of space marines in there. I just really wanted to put all of the iconography of space marines on. So you can see the dark angels, some ultramarines, some imperial fists, but there is also orc parts. And then he has this looted heavy bolter and I just scratch build this little tripod and I just try to integrate these elements naturally into uh, yeah, all the other parts that were already on there. So it does tell a story, it has interesting conversion, it uses existing background because like I said the crew they just collect. So it really hits a nerve and uh, it's a really good entry to a golden demon because it hits all of these elements. I really really like how I worked out the highlights on the gun. So you can see these culminating highlights and also the little cylinders. The bullets are highlighted really nicely. I started to realize that there's such a thing as bounce lights and I also uh, tried to paint highlights of the chip metal with non-metallic and I think that was really effective because it created some nice contrast and the freehands overlapping and also not really being centerpieces. You can see that a lot of the icons are just cut and only parts of them are showing. I think that was a big plus for the composition. Things that I really don't like is the way that I defined both the animals and the crude skins. The crude rider has, I think, all the right highlights in the right place. It's more subtle confined highlights again i did not really highlight the shapes properly but i think it worked it's more subtle it's this really bright skin tone but i could have done a lot better on this the skin of the riding animal i have to add that this was a fort world sculpt so they had these resin uh, elements to them that were really fine the problem that i had again i did not properly know how to highlight volumes so I should have highlighted all of the back of the neck brighter and then just shaded everything downwards. I was kind of lost so I <laughs> just painted everything green and then added the typical brown um, shades that I usually do. You can see some interesting highlights on the calves of the animal and here and there I have like strains of, of muscles highlighted. But overall there's just no concept of how light interacts with this beast. So when I praise the light interaction on the rifle and how everything reflects nicely, I completely botched that on the riding animal. But it's still one gold. And like I said, I think it's attributed to a lot of the other boxes it ticks, even though it's missing maybe some of the um, painting forte in some parts. But overall, I think this is the Golden Demon winner that I like the most out of my entries, maybe with the Celeborn from 2005. Those are my favorite entries.
now we're taking a big jump forward five more years to 2018 and those are the last two demons that I won. One of them is Arwen and I'll start with the things that I like which is the base. There is some natural stone integrated with carved stone so some architecture that I sculpted on there and how the branch just wraps around all of that. I think the base is really well composed and with her being offset over the edge of the round base I think that works really well too and that's something that I like to do. And overall again it's a really small miniature but for that I like the transitions and I like how the free hands just come out of the transitions and just curve down and have these shadow parts and highlight parts and just being really meticulous about everything and even the non-metallic parts on the sword even though it's a relatively thick sword for the scale was able to work in some nice color transition you see that on the lower part I have a bit of yeah, some yellow in there one thing I don't really like is the way the face turned out I wasn't quite sure where I want to put the light source so everything else is a bit more globally while the face light source is offset to her left side and everything is just too white it's just a tiny bit too chalky if I did everything the way I did the her right cheek I think that would have been okay but just the way that everything works together the face is just off the rest is fine but the face just doesn't work other than that I don't have much of a critique the black hair was difficult to work with so what I did was I was just highlighting some of these um, braided uh, strains on top and then as it goes down I, it went darker and then I just put in a highlight here and there what else should you do in that tiny scale and on the top I had um, some more global light and just a reflection running across I think that works and again we have the typical smoothness that I put in and I painted that one in 2009 and I entered it nine years later and it won a gold demon and that kind of tells you something about what Games Workshop is looking for. It's these smooth, consistent paint jobs that don't necessarily jump overboard with creativity but are just solid in a technique and consistent in technique and I think the base and the composition are another point that just elevates this piece. And that brings us to the last gold demon winner that I have also won a silver demon in 2018 it also is more than nine years old more than 11 years by now but it ticks the same boxes tells a story there is some base figures where I added a bit of detail and on that detail which is a banner I added a neatly executed freehand the composition works it's two figures that overlook a battlefield there's not a lot of contrast but it's smooth and tidy gradients so it takes that box of being consistent across the whole composition so what I really like is the neatness of everything the banner is really neat it uh, is meticulously painted even though sometimes I feel like my lines are not smooth enough but that's obviously nitpicking at a really high level elements that I would change is probably the skin color of the horse right now it's yeah just this pale white with a bit of shadow then again I think that's exactly what worked for winning this second place is that there is just a perfect transition from a bit of a shadow color to the white and then a bit of a highlight color but personally I feel like it's just boring and too simple and I also think where the horse structure melts with these claws that are on the front and the back legs it just becomes too rough and another thing that i find a bit boring is all of the dust all of the pigment just poured on the base then again i think maybe because it's a war-torn battlefield that could be a good backdrop for the the figures with everything being just unified by bombardment and explosions and just general fighting okay I don't think I did a good job critiquing all of these the thing is in the context of golden demons most of these were yeah just 
ticking so many boxes that uh, the competition was looking for, even though some of it has changed today, but a lot of it is still the same. Like I could prove with the entries that were nine years old, but still winning in 2018. So hopefully this video was still interesting, even though I was not as hard on myself as I promised myself to be. I know that most people watch my channel more for the tutorials than me talking to the camera, but this video was kind of requested by a lot of people. Show us all your gold demon winners. So that request got fulfilled. <laughs> Let me know if you liked the video and of course, please leave a thumbs up if you did. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. It helps a ton. I'm really bad with this. I'm just asking for subscriptions and all of that, but it helps the channel a lot. So if you like the video, maybe consider subscribing so that you get notified when I upload. Thanks a lot to all of my patrons who allow me to do what I'm doing. Without you guys, the YouTube videos would not exist. So thanks a lot for that. And yeah, that's it. I, I have nothing else. You guys don't make it any easier for me to make videos, huh? <laughs>